Peter, welcome back to Regina. Thanks. For a second time, you'll be delivering the Midifee Lecture here at the University yeah. of Regina. What's it like to be back in the Queen City and having the honor of delivering this lecture? Well, you know, I, I am honored by it. That's the right term to use. I mean, I grew up as a kid in Ottawa, and I used to listen to James M. Minifee, and it meant a lot to me when the first time I was asked uh, to be here back in the 90s and then to uh, get, a second, get a second chance to get it right. Uh, is great. So, I, it, and you know, I used to live here. I lived here in 1976. I was the national reporter, uh, based in Regina for Saskatchewan, and uh, so I, any time here is is a good time. How did you decide on a topic for this particular lecture? Well, uh, you know, in our business, there are always things to talk about. Uh, there are lots of issues confronting us. I, I felt strongly that uh, it was time that I uh, spoke out on the fake news issue. Uh, because I think it's important. Uh, we're at a, a major point in the, in, in the history of journalism when uh, it seemed to be okay to attack the integrity uh, of, uh, of good, solid journalists. And that's what's going on. We see it most obviously uh, on the part of the President of the United States and those around him. But we see it beyond that as well. And so I wanted to talk about that issue and why it's important. Um, and how to counter it. And so those are kind of the themes to what I'm going to discuss tonight. What is fake news? Some people can't even agree on, on what fake news is. You're right. I mean, the, the real fake news, as odd as that sounds as a phrase, <laughs> yes. is a real issue. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's when, you know, in the case of Russia, countries, and they're not alone, but certainly they've uh, uh, excelled at pushing stories that are totally made up for a purpose, to try and influence opinion. That is fake news, that is a concern, that is operating uh, within social media circles, uh, and we have to be aware of it and the impact it can have, because I don't think anybody realized it two years ago when this was going on, the impact it could have. That's real fake news. Uh, unreal fake news is when you just simply disagree with whatever's being said about you, um, and that's what we're seeing south of the border. To watch what happened with Russia and the American election, and so much of that was driven through social media, mm -hmm. do you think that social media sites need to take a greater responsibility for what's being shared amongst those sites? Yeah, I, I think the old argument about, hey, we're not a media company, that doesn't work anymore. Uh, the fact is, they have to take greater responsibility, and there are some indications that they're starting to do that. How do we as legitimate journalists distinguish ourselves from what people will consume and as you say they'll say well I believe in this and I like it, it reflects my views back so mm -hmm. it must be real so how do we push forward as legitimate journalists to, to have our stand in this in this business well we push forward by doing what we're best at which is telling the truth and ensuring people understand it's the truth and being transparent in the way we tell our stories that people understand what it is we go through to get to uh, the stories we tell um, but basically, you know, the only thing that matters in our business at the end of the day is truth. Truth matters more than anything else. And so we have to ensure that we're able to convince our audience that what we are telling them is true. It's been since about six months since you left your post at the National. What's that time been like for you? Well, I've learned it's okay to have a beard. <laughs> yes, it is. You and David Letterman. That's right. Um, it, it's been great, actually. You know, I was a little worried about what it was going to be like. Uh, but I'm busy. I knew, you know, I'm, I'm giving a lot of speeches. This is the third one in, in, in five nights in different parts of the country. I'm traveling a lot. Um, I'm on a couple of boards. I'm, uh, I'm still involved with documentary work for the CBC, and I'm working on a, a couple of those that will hopefully will be aired in the next year. Uh, so there's what, what I have to make sure I do is that I don't work harder than I already was working, because that wasn't the idea here. But I'm, you know, it's a different pace uh, than I than I was used to, in the you know in the heart like you are of daily news, and uh, I'm really enjoying it. We had asked on Facebook uh, for people to mm -hmm. write in and, and ask some questions of you. There's always a lot of curiosity around Peter Mansbridge, right. and uh, Bruce Williams asked who was the most interesting prime minister to interview and why. Um, well, they were all pretty interesting. You know, I, I interviewed both Stephen Baker and Pearson after they were out of uh, the Prime Minister's office, but every Prime Minister since then. They all were interesting in different ways. Um, I think the most challenging uh, 
uh, was clearly um, Pierre Trudeau. Uh, Why? Well, I, you know, he was a pretty smart guy, and he wasn't shy about making you feel that he was a lot smarter than you were. <laughs> and I was much younger then, obviously, um, but uh, but but it was uh, he was a challenge, and when you you know you you had to prepare really hard uh, to sit down and do an interview with him and you had to be prepared for him to challenge you in the interview uh, and and so I learned a lot through doing that but as I said there you know they all have their strengths and weaknesses um, and uh, you know I was lucky that for the most part uh, I got along with all of them very good. Uh, James Sally asks, considering your duty as a journalist to maintain integrity and leave personal opinion and commentary out of presenting the news, have you ever wished you could voice your opinion on matters more openly as a private citizen without it having an impact on your role as Canada's most recognized news anchor? Uh, no, I, you know, I didn't. I mean, I covered a lot of touchy uh, issues that divided and sometimes the country, certainly divided the political parties. Um, there was almost a luxury in being able to cover those without having to say how you felt personally, if in fact you had a strong personal feeling. There, there are some issues, not, not public policy issues, but some issues where journalists um, can't hide their own personal feelings, and probably shouldn't. Uh, and those are stories more of um, where it's clear that it's not a on the one hand, on the other hand story. Mm -hmm. Something that's happened here is very wrong, yeah. and we're going to tell you why it's wrong, uh, and, and it shouldn't be happening. Um, and and that's, that becomes a personal opinion based on fact. Do you find that there's been a shift in how the news is presented over the years from a time where it was very much the stoic news anchor mm -hmm. to now there being a little bit more acceptance of reporters and hosts demonstrating some emotion and empathy and and yeah. just general perception around stories that would be widely accepted as yeah. you say based on fact yeah i'm not all the way there yet i mean i think there is a there is a part of the traditional news anchor that uh, that a lot of viewers are always going to be uh, want which is give me the facts tell me what happened don't try to influence unduly my opinion. Uh, allow me to hear the facts, lay out the context, be fair, let me make up my own mind. Uh, to do that, uh, you know, you, you've got to be careful not to, in any fashion, um, sort of try to sway things by the way you react to the story. Thanks for your time today, Peter. Thank you.